Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's a revisit of the week three eBay repair challenge where I had the faulty power supply for the PlayStation 4. Now, yes, I've got the PlayStation 4 up and running. In fact, it's sold now, so I won't actually be able to test this in a PlayStation 4. But reading all the comments and also my curiosity, I really did want to find out what was wrong with this faulty power supply here. So I don't know if you remember, but basically I had to change over this MOSFET here and also the fuse was blown, but still it didn't work. And uh, at the time, I thought the only thing that was wrong with it was a little diode down here, because if I put my meter on continuity, there was a short across, I think it was this diode, yeah. So I thought it was that, but I wasn't too sure. I thought it might be the chip controlling that, that had shorted. I didn't really know. So uh, quite a few people said, that they would like to know what was wrong with it. And more importantly, I had loads of messages about suggestions on what it could be. And one word kept coming up over and over again. And that was, check the bridge rectifier. All right, my soldering iron's struggling. With this, I'm gonna add some leaded solder to it. There we go, it's better. There we go, lovely. Now, I didn't actually make a note of which way that went in, but I can just, luckily, I can copy this one. I'm, I'm hoping they're gonna be exactly the, hoping they're gonna be exactly the same, but that was a bit silly. I should have made a note of which way that actually went in. Well, what I'm hoping to see is that this one here is faulty. So now, let's get multimeter. And remember, it was the two outer ones that were shorting, and they're still shorting now. Right, so basically, that says to me, that the bridge rectifier is definitely faulty. See what's happening with this diode now, because maybe there's numerous things. Yeah, so that diode is still shortened, even though that bridge rectifier is out. So that says to me it's not just the bridge rectifier at fault. So shall we now take out the diode and see, because no point in me putting in the bridge rectifier, because something else is just gonna blow, isn't it? I might end up blowing other things. So this definitely shouldn't still be shorting. So shall we pop this particular diode out and see if the pads are shorting? And if they are, we know then it might well be the chip here that's controlling it, or it might be the diode itself that has uh, blown. So let me see if I can just unsolder, unsolder that. Just pop the board there. The board just bubbled up. Wow, look at it. Can you see it bubbled up there, delaminated. Wow, I've never had that happen before. So I suppose what I should have done is I should have heated up a wider area first. I wonder, hopefully I might get away with that because this isn't gonna be a multi-layer board, is it? It's just gonna be this side and the other side. There we go. Okay, so now, that is completely and utterly burnt. And is that because, is that the failure point then? Or did I muck that up now, look. Can you see there? It's uh, that's blackened, isn't it? Tell you what, let's give this a good clean up. Actually, before I clean it, let's just measure this diode, see if we've got a short both ways again. I'm not on diode test, I'm just on continuity. We haven't. No, we haven't. I'm just gonna put it on diode test. 0.7 that way round. and open that way around. That says to me that that diode is actually okay. So, I 
Uh, oh, I'm confused now. I've caused serious damage there. Let's see if I can just test for a short on the pads. Right, so the pads themselves are shorting. Right, why? Uh, so that that's short in there. Did I? Did I cause all that damage there just from heating it up then? I mean, it looks like it's blackened under the diode, so how would I have burnt under the diode? I don't know now. I really don't know. Anyway, the short's still here, so we've got other stuff to go on now, haven't we? So I wonder now, I, mean, I can't really see where everything goes to. I wonder should I pop off this chip here and then see if the short goes? That might be a good idea. Right, okay, so that came off cleanly, but again, it made the popping noise up here again. So the board really has delaminated up here. Good news is there's not a huge amount of traces there, so you could probably clean it with IP8, see where all the traces go, and then work out what's what. Right, okay, so now let's check for shorts on here again. Ah, still shorting. So it's not that chip, is it? Wow. So something else has failed, which is causing that to short. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this with IPA and see if I can trace those tracks and see where they go to, to see if I can work out what's what. I was sure it was going to be that chip. Quickly check the pads now before I take the other one off. Right, okay, so they are shorting. I'm just going to go on the capacitor, and the capacitor's not shorting, so I might as well pop that capacitor back on. I'm going to check the pads on this other capacitor. Right, okay, so they're also shorting. So again, that's not the capacitor. So I'm just gonna pop that one back on. It came off really easy, that one. Nope, so it's not that. Okay, so still struggling on with this. I really, really, really want to find out what it is. I know I probably won't even be putting 240 volts into the faulty one because it's just so burnt and stuff, but I just need to, I really want to prove what this fault was. Now, if you have a look here, do you remember that the pad here is going to this one here? Yeah. And on the faulty board, it's also short into here because of, uh, you know, connected it through various other ones to ground. But check this out. If I go down to this one here, can you see this is linked to this one here? But look, not this one. This one here, the second one along, is actually linked to this one here. Yeah, this one here. So now, if this was faulty, that would throw a short between here and here, which would then link up this ground rail here. Now, if we go over to the faulty board, that's exactly what's happening. You can have a look between this pin here and this pin here. We've got a short. So this one here, like we said, goes to here. And this one goes to here. But yet, they're both connected together. So I'm going to unsolder this. I wonder if this is the dodgy chip. So let's try and take this one off and see if that fixes it.
Right, again, that was a horrendous one, and uh, the board popped up again. So, note to self, this power supply must be kind of prone to laminating up, which is, is fine. I'm not going to be using this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm only doing this for testing, but it's still interesting to see. In hindsight, maybe I should have added leaded solder to the contacts first to reduce the temperature down a bit to make it easier to come off because I've never had a board like this, so I haven't got a lot of experience, but still, I have kind of messed around with quite a few chips now. I've never had a board where it laminates and pops up so uh, so quick. Right, okay, now let's see if these pads are still shorting. No, they're not. So now let's go between these two. I think we might have found our problem. Right, let's bring this chip down into here. Now I need to clean it all up. The chip on the good board, and can you see there's a tiny little dot here? And can you see the dot is here as well? So we know that it's in that orientation. Now, watch this. So it was this pin here and this pin that was shorting. So let me show you on the faulty board, obviously. So let me show you on this board now, these two pins do not short. Yeah, now watch this. Here. Well, I'll tell you what, look, you can see if I jam it in there and jam it in here, they don't short. And now if I jam it in here, jam it in here, can you see they're shorting? Let me see if I can get it perfect. There you go, those two pins there. 100% that chip is the faulty one. So let me take it off here now put it onto here, we're still in the right orientation. Okay, and that one there, and that one. Wow, okay, I am 100% certain of that. So, the fault's on this board here. So the power surge came, it definitely blew this MOSFET, it definitely blew the fuse, and it blew this chip here. So it wasn't anything to do with diode, it wasn't anything to do with that chip, it was to do with the chip here. Now part of me is tempted to solder the chip back on, solder this diode back on, bodge it up with the, get the chip off this board here, bodge it up and put it on here, just to see if we have the 5 volts and 12 volts. But you know what, it's going to need a lot of work here, it's a complete mess, I'd only be doing it for the video, and I feel that that has definitely proved the fault, because we had one of the, the lines going to ground, and it's from this chip here. And now if we go on to the pads here, let's see if I've got any pads remaining. So we were, which pads were we? With this one here and this one here. Yeah, so the middle one's come off. If I go here and here, you can see now the short's gone. And now let me zoom in a bit more. Right, so this pad here was going up to this pad. Or was it this one? No, sorry, this one here. Uh, this one, there you go. Right, so you can see that's shorting now. And now, if I go onto this pad, you can see it's coming up here. And now, across that diode, check it out, the short has completely gone. 100%, there's no doubt in my mind that that is the final faulty piece of the surge problem. Oh, I'm so pleased to buy that, the bridge rectifier, a fuse, and the MOSFET, because the MOSFET, I think, did cost a couple of pounds. Uh, it probably, and all the time taken, you might as well really probably just get yourself a, another power supply and then you're gonna have more spares in case something goes in the future. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.